So there are our three contracts I hope to finish off today. So let's take a look quickly at launching the space station. This isn't the stock one. This is the one that comes from stations and bases redone, I think is what it's called. Uh, it's in the list in the description if, if I got that wrong. Um, but basically, I mean, it needs to generate power and, and have communications and stuff, but it, it needs to support four Kerbals. And I now have the doo -doo -doo -doo, Hitchhiker Can newly freshly unlocked. In fact, I needed to unlock that uh, in order to make this contract become available. And this conveniently happens to be able to seat four Kerbals. Uh, and I'm uh, not gonna use it. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to use this. This is just the um, the Mark I crew cabin. Now, you might be wondering, why why are you doing this? Why are you just using the Mark I crew cabin and not the hitchhiker if you want to host four Kerbals? The reason is, is because I have um, a strategy in place from the Strategia mod that is... Engineer focus is what it's called and it gives me bonuses on completing contracts that have to do with stations and bases, but I need to have an engineer aboard and if I put the hitchhiker up I plan on by the way launching this on crude and then sending a crew up there to dock with it if uh, I send up the hitchhiker without an engineer aboard then this contract will be satisfied. I won't have an engineer and I won't get the bonus that's here. So what I'm going to do is send up a very small station that can only hold two Kerbals, dock a vessel that can hold two Kerbals together. That's space for four Kerbals. And I'll have an engineer, obviously, on the vessel. So that's the entire kind of plan there. Okay, let's get started with designing this space station. Uh, so we're going to go to coupling. And I now have the Clampatron, regular Clampatron docking port. So that's going to go on that end. On the other end here, I'm going to have a service bay. And inside said service bay is going to go a small set of reaction wheels. The Octo 2 probe core. And I'm also going to put in a KOS scriptable duber dob. Uh, that's for running KOS scripts. And while I'm thinking about it, we will increase the file, the disk space on this guy, and have it load up my boot file. So there we go. That's that's all ready to go. And by the way, um, the first module I'm probably going to attach to this is a hitchhiker. But I just want to kind of show something because this is going to affect the way this is going to get built. If I put on the hitchhiker, hitchhiker there, it's not going to go on like this. Obviously there'll be some connecting connectabilities there, but if I configure the pod, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, configure the pod. There's science aboard said pod. How do we configure the said science? What am I missing here? Maybe I need to put a Kerbal aboard? Is that what it is? That seems silly. There is science that's available on this pod, but other than a crew report, obviously. Okay, um, I, uh, this will have to be something I will have to check on in a little bit. Wow, this is really having trouble fitting on the screen. Is it low down here? No. Okay, I'm going to do one last look. Oh, cr configure crude experiments. There it is. I don't think I was there before. I think I need, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But anyway, there are some new crude experiments I can do. I have the flight experiment. Now, all of these do have some requirements. Um, this one requires 5.18 units it'll consume sorry 5.18 units of electric charge per second and it will run over a period of 14 days that is a healthy amount of electricity so i got to make sure that we can support that and it needs a minimum of two crew and they have to have a minimum um this is all like uh minimum building 
levels, I've done that. So I plan on running this flight experiment, so I want to attach onto this all the requirements to run this flight experiment. That's the idea. There is a second one called the float experiment. Let's close these contracts for now. Um, it also has requirements, and the one that's the kicker in the head is 25 cubic meters of volume per crew, and it needs to have a minimum of four crew, so clearly, simple math gives us 100 cubic meters, and to give you some perspective on how much 100 cubic meters is, if I take a look at the habitat stats down here, this is now at 11.5 cubic meters, so it needs to be approximately 10 times this size. Uh, that'll happen at some point, but <laughs> not right now. So we are going to run the flight experiment. So what I want to do, let's turn that so it's on. There we go. So we're now running the flight experiment because when I put this on waiting, it now counts that electricity cost in here. So what we're going to do now is start adding on what's required so I can run so I can consume, what do we got here? 5.337 units of electric charge per second for 14 days. Um, so one thing I'm gonna have to do is improve the batteries because right now with the batteries that are aboard, which isn't very much to be honest, it's gonna be able to go for one minute and 34 seconds. It needs to survive the Kerbin night, Kerbin night, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. So I'm gonna add some batteries on this. Uh, I'm going to start with, I now have these Z1K rechargeable battery banks. I'm going to need a lot more than that. Now it's up to 4 minutes and 41 seconds. And then I want to put some sort of a structural thing on here that I can mount more batteries and solar panels and also all the life support that I'm going to need. And I was thinking that I was going to build something kind of truss structurally like. Oh, not with that, like this kind of a thing, right? All the way down. But these truss pieces are fairly heavy as well. I'm going to be docking the ship that's going to come up at the other end of this. And I kind of wanted to build something that I could convince myself looked like a tube. So what I'm going to do, that's something that Kerbals could actually travel along. So I'm going to use instead of those structural pieces, a structural tube. Here is the one point two five meter structural tube and we'll give it some length like that and then we're going to mount stuff on there and I'm going to put another battery on this guy um ba -bum -bum -bum. why batteries why is that so hard there we go so we're now up to that and um I'm gonna let's see let's go with I think Six batteries here so now this thing will last for 15 minutes at the rate at which it's consuming electricity so what we'll do is put another bank of them down here and okay now it's up to 22 minutes that's longer than a curb and night that should be okay and then I'm also going to put on and I need to cover the generate you know how much is being consumed again 5.337 one of these is only 1.6 units of electric charge per second so I'm gonna need six of them but I'm not gonna put them in a ring like that I'm gonna put like this sort of a deal and I want to use these ones that you can extend and retract right that's the difference between these ones that come in the little box and these ones, which for all intents and purposes are the same, but these ones you can't retract once you've extended them. These ones that come in the little box, you can retract once you've extended them. And we're not going to need this much power all the time. So I figure have ones that I can retract and then I can extend them as needed. So I think, yeah, I'm now up to perpetual as far as the electric I, I, I'm covering as much as I'm consuming and if I put this in the dark if it's in the dark it'll last for 22 minutes and 52 seconds that is longer than the Kerbin night is at low Kerbin orbit so that's looking okay I think so and then I think all I'm going to do is finish this off with a docking port I'm looking at you 
at the back end here. We'll do, we're gonna do, need to do more than this, but this is now at least sort of the basic size of this thing. And this docking port's going to be a junior docking port because the ship I'm gonna send up for now is only gonna have a Clampatron Junior on it, not the Clampatron Senior on it, because I actually still don't have a lot of, like if we look at the crude parts I have, I don't have a lot, I've not unlocked a lot lately. I'm still not even up to the three crude um, command pods. So this is looking kind of thing. I'm gonna take this actually, let's just grab the whole thing. Yeah, I'm gonna put it like this for now. Just so this is sort of, I don't know, so I can, um, this is, by the way, let's give it a name. This is going to be the WK Memorial Space Station, named after Warrior King Kerman, who uh, early in this series uh, lost, uh, sacrificed his life for the good of the Kerman Hunt Corps. I don't think it was a choice in his matter, but you know, it happened. So we'll name the space station after him. Okay, so that's sort of looking like a thing. Now, we got to think about life support. So if we go to the Mark I crew cabin, the Mark I crew cabin, actually, we can take Jebediah out of here because the last thing I want to do is actually send up somebody with you. I don't want to send up anybody in this thing. Uh, we want to configure this pod and make sure that it's suitable for Kerbal habitation. So... Scrubber. Never ever want to mess with the scrubber. The scrubber is what takes the CO2 out of the air and uh, your Kerbals will suffer greatly and quickly if you ever have this turned off. So you always may want to make sure that's on, it's available, and it's powered. Actually that brings me to, well we'll get to that in a second. Pressure control as well. I want this capsule, this cabin here pressurized, so I want to keep that on. The water recycler takes waste water and uses electricity to generate fresh water again, as well as some other byproducts like ammonia and carbon dioxide. The why well, you want the carbon dioxide for now, I don't know. But I'm going to turn that off for now because um, it's not really too necessary. And I think uh, I'll put it on the bigger thing when I on the hitchhiker when I bring that up. You don't need that in all your pods. But what I do want to have is this monoprop fuel cell that uses oxygen and monopropellant to generate electricity. It might be a good, it's nice to have a backup source of power generation in case things go astray. And that means I need to put on some extra oxygen. I got to remember to do that. Um, of course, remember this is just going to be in low Kerbin orbit. So if things go wrong, we'll always be able to get our Kerbals back down. All right, so that takes care of that. Now let's start thinking about uh, resources. So number one, nitrogen. Um, it says here that there's enough nitrogen to last for four years and 364 days. Don't let that fool you. The moment you start doing EVAs, you start losing the atmosphere and it repressurizes the capsule with nitrogen. You can use up the nitrogen really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this small pressurized tank might decide later exactly where these goes. We'll tweak this in a little bit. And these are oxygen tanks right now. I wanna turn them to nitrogen tanks. Uh, now it says I got enough nitrogen for 27 years. Uh, I suspect I'll be giving getting more nitrogen up here at some point, but we'll see how it goes. I've never quite, I'm still not quite 100% on um, my nitrogen usage, it, I'm not the best at this. Oh, I should also think about, before I get into that, communication. Um, the, if I get in here and configure this pod again, configure crude experiments, this experiment, the flight experiment, generates data at 7.8 kilobytes per second. And at 7.8 kilobytes per second, the Communitron 16 can only transmit at, where is it here, 2.2 kilobytes per second. So we're gonna step up our transmitting to the DTS-M1, which can transmit 25 kilobytes per second. I'm gonna stick just one of them, we'll be fine on the side here. Extend that, there we go. So that's gonna be our communication for transmitting home the experiment. That. Okay, 
Uh, what was that? Nitrogen. Okay, let's go along here. We got... What's after nitrogen? Oh. Oh, do I have to put... Oh, yes! Okay, it doesn't... I'm going to put on some Kerbals. Just put the... Yeah, the Kerbals in the right spot. It doesn't show this usage properly unless you have Kerbals to consume them. So, for instance, this thing for now is going to have... Why on earth does this not change? radiation why isn't it showing me maybe because I don't have any oxygen and food and stuff let's get into oxygen and food and stuff let's grab one of these life support boxes now it's showing it okay so it didn't show it doesn't show any until you actually put some on there there you go okay so now it's got food for a hundred and sixteen days for two Kerbals and if you want to know like how much this food will last for more Kerbals, all you got to do is put more Kerbals in there and you can see it adjusts it accordingly. But for now, we're only going to have two Kerbals aboard. So I think that is going to be fine. Uh, we should have water too. It's got water for one year and 144 days. So that seems okay. Uh, nitrogen. Oh. No oxygen, so let's throw on some oxygen. Let's put on an oxygen tank. So I just put on a pressurized tank. Oxygen, that's enough oxygen for 107 days. But don't forget, I also want to... It's being consumed at... Where does it say here? 0 0.207 per minute. So that's a pretty low rate of consumption. If I go to the fuel cell where's the fuel cell this fuel cell uses up oxygen in 1.705 per second so if I turn on that fuel cell we'll burn through this oxygen pretty quick how much oxygen oh I know what I can do I know how I can tell let's see if I turn on the fuel cell Oh, it won't. There's no monopropellant on board this thing, is there? No. I, let's put on some monopropellant. Needs monopropellant to run the fuel cell. Oh my gosh! Here, can I? Let's filter this by resource. I don't have know what. Do do do. There, monopropellants. Do I not have any monopropellant tanks? Are you fracking? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I have no containers for monopropellant yet. Well, isn't that fascinating? Okay. Um, all right. Um, I have no idea. Okay. Let, well, we, we, I guess we won't be able to run that monopropellant thing because I have no monopropellant. Oh, I can probably. I know what I can do. I have configurable containers. I have configurable, configurable, configurable containers. Let's take the smallest container I got, like this one. You can't fool me with your lack of. Okay, we'll, we'll tweak this in a little bit. Now this is set for liquid fuel and oxygen, but if I go edit the tanks, Take the liquid fuel and oxygen out. Change this to... There should be monopropellant, right? Fuel cell M. Max. Add. Oh, it's oxygen and monopropellant. Oh, nice. So it's adding both oxygen and monopropellant and I'm assuming because it's done this in, for me in the past in the right proportions nice 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 now here's the question if I turn on sorry I got a lot of windows open if I now turn on the fuel cell there it is the oxygen so it's here for I close off the electricity I'm just trying to get an idea how long I can run that fuel cell for based on what I just put on there still oh and 
No, it says perpetual. It's obviously, can I take... Yeah, let's not count this. That's how you do it. It will run for 20 minutes. There's enough monopropellant and oxygen on this thing to run it for 20 minutes. I think that would be for an emergency situation only. So I think that should be good. Just gonna slide these, I don't know, just so they look a little better. There we go, so nice. Okay, so forget you game, I'm able to get my model propellants on there anyway. <laughs> Okay, we can now put these. Let's turn these back on. I don't need to. Well, maybe we'll extend them too. Let's extend them. Extend. Okay. Uh, how are we doing here? So we got oxygen for 407 days. That's clearly going to be fine. Water. Oh, I took my kerbals out, didn't I? No, I didn't. How can I have enough water for one year? Oh, wait. Turn off the. I know why. I bet you the mo the fuel cell produces water. Let's turn that off. Why are you being this way? There. Water for one year. Food for 116 days. That's a lot of water. Oxygen. So way more oxygen than I need. Okay. Let's uh, do some adjusting. Let's go with the small oxygen ones. Let's try this on maybe four times symmetry. We'll tweak all this in just a little bit. It's adding about a hundred days of oxygen. Kerbals are clearly living off the oxygen that's in there too. Okay, I, I think that's good for oxygen. Just feels like a ton of water. What if I take this off? Actually, what if I put this on? You can adjust these. Oops, that's four of them. I don't want that many. What if I turn this to be just food? How can that still be a hundred? Oh, there we go. That's 161 days of food. There's no Oh, there's no water aboard, but maybe if I just took one of these small ones and made that one water, how much water does that make? 241 days of water, 161 days of food, 391 days of oxygen. I, I, I think I'm good. I think I'm good for all of those supplies there. Okay. Um, let's see here. Stress. Yeah, it's a little cramp. That's fine. Uh, comfort, they don't have a panorama, that's the cupola module. <laughs> they don't have firm ground, that's to create gravity, to do some spinny stuff. They don't have plants, that will have to come for the future. Uh, it is pressurized, that's good. What else we got here? We got radiation, don't have to worry about because we're not going to go above the belts. The radiation belts, reliability. Oh, we do... Uh, Oh, we need more means of attitude control. Ah, that should be okay. Oh, it only has one means of communication. That's a good point. Why don't we put a little bit of backup communication on there? I'm going to just put on a couple of communitrons right in there to that. Oh, they're going to be... I was hoping they wouldn't stick out the doors, but let's see. Maybe if we... What if I put it on radial? That's what I'm thinking about. That should be one on the other side too. Tweak the position of this a little bit. That should be all right, I think. Can the doors close over those? Pretty sure, yeah. All right, um, and there's one on the other side. Great, so that's a backup means of communication. I think, I think, I think, I think I'm, think I'm onto something. So let's, let's start dressing this up a little bit. So uh, the hitchhiker again is not going to go up. It's just going to be what you see here. 
Uh, I'm not going to put RCS on this craft. It's going to be just a station. It's going to be passive for any kind of docking. I got the question, Kermy says, uh, without RCS. But no RCS, but there definitely will be lights. I see, yeah, lights, definitely lights. We'll get to that in just a second. But I'm just going to see if I need to reposition. Uh, let's put this container. Take the radial off, single symmetry. Just, just moving around containers a little bit, see if they look a little better. Uh, I got colors. Let's put on green and orange. No, let's make that green. Green is for stuff that we like to consume. These are oxygen containers. Um, I got them on four-way symmetry. Let's see if I can find a nicer home for them. I think just like that's okay. And then these are nitrogen containers. We'll color those ones orange. I'm always a big fan of just any kind of differently colored little greebly bits you can put on there, the better. <laughs> so there we go. I think I think that kind of works. Um, I know what I'm thinking about. I am going to put a water recycler on this thing at some point. And for a water recycler, I do want to be able to hold water. So I'm going to take another one of these small life support boxes. We're going to put on single symmetry. We'll equally space these two. That. Uh, and this one is just for waste water. Wet waste? Yeah, water waste. So it will hold water waste. We'll color it orange. Don't don't drink this one. <laughs> okay. That should be good. Because we want to if we're going to start recycling the water, we need a place to hold it. I think that's all right. Uh let's see textures. Yeah, let's go with that darker texture on that one. This I don't think, no, I'm gonna keep it white. This I don't think you can change texture. And there's not much I can do with textures. Okay, this doesn't have, no. All right, uh, let's close this off. Uh, actually, what we'll do is we'll say, oh, lights, lights, oh, for goodness sakes, lights. Lights, how can I forget lights? So, um, I'm assuming this is the top. That's going to be forward. So this is the aft end. So this is the starboard side. And if it wasn't before, it is now. <laughs> and so we'll put on a pair of lights. And we'll make these. Uh, that one needs to be green. And it's going to blink. And we'll blink at a half second interval. And I think I'm going to tweak its position just a little bit. Slide this into the battery a little bit. I can tell more from the other side. Yeah, it looks all right. Okay. And then we'll remove the symmetry on this one and just simply make this one red. Okay. And then we got to put some lights on the other side for the exact same idea. So this is going to be a little different. We'll put them on the, whoops, outside like that. Again, oh, I'm not quite that way. These ones clearly have to be white. And blend in. Again, these ones will blink. Half second interval. This one will be green. This one will be red. So I'll remove the symmetry, make it red. Uh, solar panels can occlude one another. We'll deal with that. John says, be careful with the solar panels because clearly, like for instance, if you're pointed straight into the sun, the ones at the back here can be occluded by the ones before it. But uh, I got I got me a cunning plan. I think I'm going to be able to deal with that. But one thing at a time, I think I should move them so they're further apart than they are in either case. But uh, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, lighty lights. Uh, let's see here. What about getting I just want to light this a bit 
What about if I take just a couple of these, kind of plunk them in here. Oh, I just put the blink on, light on. I don't want them blinking. A little hard to tell inside here if that's gonna be. I'm just thinking of something that will light up the sides a little bit. Tilt them downwards a little bit. That should be good. Change the texture to white, because it's kind of white there. And we'll tweak them into the body. That should be good. Okay, and some lights the other way too. Exactly the same idea, except just pointing the other way, this way. I turn these ones off, by the way. I did not. Okay. Um, again, we'll t tilt them downwards a little bit. Actually, maybe not. Maybe keep them kind of pointed upwards because eventually there'll be a hitchhiker at this end. Yeah, we'll keep them like that. And but we will color them white as well. And we will. Tweak them downwards. Um, and then finally, okay, let's reposition these, <clears throat> excuse me, these solar panels a bit. So I want to just spread them out a little bit. Whoops. So that can be a little more this way. I think it's okay that I'm kind of putting them into the Oh yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm having trouble with... There we go. And uh, the flappy door thing kind of goes over the... Well, well, whatever. And then I move this one so it's about halfway between. You know what would be better? If I turn this just around the other way. And then the two door panels just are on top of each other rather than a door panel on top of this. I think that's better. And then I can even move this a little bit further. There. So we minimize the amount of things clipping into each other. Okay, let's close that. Actually, let's save this. Because I think I'm approaching something that's kind of a finished product. 2.5 tons shouldn't be a problem getting it into orbit. 